Before we start this chainsawing video, I want to let you guys know that I am in no way calling myself a professional arborist, professional chainsaw guy, professional small engine guy, or any of that. So if you have any suggestions, comments, or questions, please post them down there in the comments section. You can help us all. Being a sarcastic know-it-all chainsaw scientist is not helpful, but I'll bet you have some knowledge that we can all use and we can all take home. So help out. Woo! Hey there folks, this is Josh, Stony Ridge Farmer. Welcome back to another Tool Tuesdays here on the farm. Today we're going to have fun with chainsaws. We're actually going to have a little bit of fun with this guy, but the video is more focused around its little bitty baby brother, this little John Cutter G2500. So we've got the biggest saw on the farm and the smallest saw on the farm. We just picked this guy up. We're going to put it together for you, show you how it works. We're going to take it into the woods and cut a few logs with it and have some fun here today on Tool Tuesdays on the Stony Ridge. All right? Woo! I ain't afraid of work. I ain't afraid of play. I ain't afraid to get the job done and do it my own damn way. I ain't afraid of life times like this If you mess with my freedom, I'll tell you just what you can kiss oh, That's right. He's big <laughs> So before we get started, let's show you this saw. It's just a fun saw to show you. This is the G660 from Holes Forma. Again, it is very similar to the 066 steel or the MS660 or MS661. This is a monster of a saw for dropping big trees. This is not a daily use towed around the farm saw. This is a purpose built saw for our farm or we could use it on a portable sawmill pretty cool this is not what we're using today but later on in the video we'll do a little demo in the woods we'll have a little bit of fun with it i don't have a log big enough to do it justice right now but i thought i'd talk to you about it before we unbox this other little guy all right let's get to the meat and potatoes this is the saw this is the little john cutter it's about a 25 cc little arborist saw it's called a top handle arborist saw that is for limbing most of the time an arborist might have this attached to his belt for limbing up high up in a tree we won't use this saw very much in the farm but we wanted a small saw to be able to tote around with us to clear trails and not have a huge saw bouncing around in the back of the buggy so this is the John Cutter we'll open her up this is how it comes in the box all the goodies that come inside the box we'll just take them out here and we also have a scale because I want to show you how lightweight this machine is because it's just a one-handed simple chainsaw now maybe it's not recommended to use this with one hand but I think that's what it's designed for I am NOT an arborist guys leave me comments down there if you have any comments that you can give us all a little piece of advice on a tiny saw like this. I know these saws are dangerous and you can hurt yourself with them so you got to be really really careful. So inside the box we have a container for mixing your oil and gas. There's instructions in here about that. There is a, I bet you can't guess what that is, tool kit. <laughs> There's a tool kit and a little zip pouch which is something that you might not get with a fancier brand chainsaw. This is the John Cutter, a little tiny saw. This is a one finger pickup type saw. It's pretty light. This is the chain. This is the bar and protector or sleeve or whatever you want to call it. And whoop, these are the instructions. Pretty simple, pretty cool. It all comes together. Uh, experienced guy with a chainsaw might not want to use this, but you know, it's handy to have so it has the gasoline line and the oil line however much you need to put in there and I guess this will fill up the saw probably two times pretty cool we're not going to use that all right now guys this is the first time I've laid eyes on this little saw it's very very compact I <laughs> you can see how compact it's almost as big as my hand uh, we'll open her up here it looks like we've got one nut to put our bar on so we'll go ahead and get that assembled really quickly this is what is inside of our tool kit, which is very important, I think. There's probably some carb adjustment tools, uh, chainsaw type tools. Let's see what we got in here. All right, so there is the dog to go on the front of the saw. There's a tiny little baby little happy file, a Allen wrench or hex wrench, a screwdriver part, <laughs> and I guess that's for hooking onto this Phillips head screwdriver. So you come with a flat tip and a Phillips head screwdriver pretty interesting and actually this is a flat tip and a Phillips head also and you can just switch it around there you go it's not the best quality tool but it's pretty cool something you can use and it looks like there is another allen wrench in here also and of course your good old chainsaw wrench what's that called there are also a couple screws in here 
to put this guy together with to put the dog on install the dog i think that's probably what we'll do first is install the dog and basically it just goes right in here and just mounts right up what i found with with a lot of these chinese chainsaws is you got a lot of safety info but not a lot of info about the saw what's important is the mixture is 25 to 1 2 cycle oil to gasoline and it says it takes 10w30 bar chain oil or we can just use standard bar oil carburetor blah 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 and the type of chain it's a 12 inch 3 8 0 0.05 gauge chain which it already came with the chain so we don't really have to think about all that stuff you can order it with with the chain and bar or without the chain and bar and i'm told you can put a johnson red chain on here you can also put uh, steel chain or a bar and chain on here. There's all sorts of bars and chains that fit this machine. So let's get busy getting our assembly done. I think I may be missing a screw. This thing bounced around quite a bit. The screw was actually in the tool kit. I don't feel another one in there. So we may be missing one screw. I think two black screws are what holds the dog in place. We've got plenty of spares laying around the shop here though. You guys want an awesome screwdriver to keep in your truck, keep in your gator, keep in the house, in the junk drawer. One of these guys is super duper cool. It's a Klein Tools 11 in one. I'll post the link down in the video description. Hands down the most used screwdriver on the farm. Totally hands down. So for our missing screw, I have a little uh, cart back there and I just throw every type of little screw that's extra with anything that I buy back there on that cart. That's super duper handy because I can just go back through there and pilfer through all sorts of different size screws and hopefully find what I need. And I did. Awesome. So the chain brake and the chain cover are all incorporated into one with this machine. Let's go ahead and take her apart. It's loosely assembled from the factory. Out comes the chain brake. Okay. This is the chain brake assembly. All this comes in one package right here. Looks like we have a bit of a safety mechanism right here, but we'll get into that once we get into the woods. Let's go ahead and get our bar ready to rock and roll. This is the John Cutter bar. Let's get our chain out of the bag. I've had good luck with these chains. They don't dull very quickly. They perform just about the same as a major box store brand steel or Husqvarna or Johnson Red chainsaw, Oregon chain. Uh, all, these, all these chains kind of perform about the same. They don't get dull really, really quickly. They're probably all made in the same factory and then labeled a different, <laughs> with a different label. Let's see if we can mess this up real quick. Probably shouldn't have put the chain on the bar first. Well, let's put the chain on the chainsaw first. Make sure she rides right. Then we'll slip the chain on the bar. We're getting ready to build an awesome workbench on the channel, guys. If you're not subscribed to the Stony Ridge Farm channel, jump in there, pound that like button, subscribe. You get Tool Tuesdays every week. We're building stuff here on the farm. We're taking a bare piece of land and making it something beautiful. Okay, so we got our chain in place. Let's put our chain cover back on here. Very, very much a pain in the butt when you have your chain brake locked. <laughs> There we go. Okay, when you have your chain brake locked and you pull off your chain cover, that makes for a bear to wrestle sometimes. This goes in, locks into a little sleeve back here. Come on, baby. There we go, baby. Yeah, just had to learn it. So you gotta learn this stuff. There are no instructions with the saw other than how not to kill yourself with the saw, which is important. There are two tabs on the back side of this chain cover and that's what holds it in place. Bar is designed where you can flip it after you sharpen it in case you're using this saw a whole lot and you're like most people you're supposed to sharpen your flip your bar every time you sharpen your saw. Let's make sure we're snug but not too snug. I think we're in good shape. There'll be a break in period with this chain just like every other chain on planet earth. Make sure we're it's a little tight. All right, we'll get this guy all dialed in, and that's how it's assembled. That's what it is. I brought my kitchen scale out here so I could show you what it weighs. So we're going to go ahead and put it on the kitchen scale here. 8.4 pounds. Check it out. How does it feel in my hand before we use it? Feels pretty darn good. The chain brake seems to be very, very robust. 
Good hard plastic, good stuff. Got a little hook back there for hooking it onto your belt. Got an oiler here on the bar, which is pretty nifty. I like to keep things greased up and oiled. And it's good, it's tough, awesome. Let's put it on the back of the Kubota, and take it to the woods. So all the damage that you're getting ready to see here was all damage from the hurricane late last summer. Lots of mess. Lots of trees down, laying across the road here. Washed out bridges. More trees down. More mess. So all of what you're seeing here is mess from the hurricane that I have just not had time or made time to get back in here and take care of. We got a couple saw logs here that we'll take up to our portable sawmill. When that guy shows up, we'll have fun with that too. We'll get some good oak out of this. A lot of big, big oak trees went down. So lots of oak down here in the forest, which is good for firewood and stuff like that too. So it's not all bad. When one thing dies, another thing lives. So what we've got is a bunch of leaners. When you cut a trail through the woods like this, you end up with what I call leaner. So we cut an old roadbed, we reopened an old roadbed, and all the little skinny trees that were depending on the other trees to stand up straight are leaning over into the trail. And that's where we wanna use this little John Cutter. We can just carry it with us. We can strap it on a four-wheeler, ATV, Jeep, or UTV, whatever we wanna do, and we'll have it. It's lightweight, it's easy to carry. I can set it in the floorboard or the back seat, or the, I can set it in the back of the uh, Kubota here. Pretty cool. Let's fire it up for the first time, see how she starts up. This is a special treat to get down here in the woods on Tool Tuesday because most of the time Tool Tuesday is just kind of dedicated to the shop. So kind of a field trip day, pretty awesome. I had this saw just sitting basically in the back seat of the uh, Kubota right here in the back floorboard. So choke run and start. You got your choke right here. Got a little bubble for pumping your fuel in. We're gonna go ahead and fill this up. I'll show you the coolest little gas can for filling up your chainsaw. For all you Husqvarna guys, this is an awesome, awesome little fuel can for filling up your chainsaw. It has a little release right here, and whenever your chainsaw tank is full, it just stops pouring, and then it has your bar oil over here, and this is my 25 to one can. So I'll give her a good shake. You also have a little toolbox in here that you can put goodies in, like a bar oiler and stuff like that and a place to stash files and your chainsaw tool right here, which we might need after we break this saw in a little bit. Pretty cool. I'll show you how it works. There we go. We'll make a mess. First mess on the back of the brand new Kubota. Awesome. <laughs> I like to leave an oily mess wherever I go. Long life tractor preservative. <laughs> Drop it in that big old gas can right there and you mash down, fills it right up. Gurgle, gurgle, gurgle. We'll also make sure we got some bar oil in this big saw. I don't like putting a whole lot of bar oil in a big saw like this that I'm not using very much because they're notorious for leaking out and dripping and making a huge mess. I use some trays to catch all the oil on the shelf that I store my chainsaws. That way it's not a mess and I try to clean up as I go. Before we put our safety gear on, we're gonna start our saw the inappropriate way. We're not gonna set it on the ground. I don't know if you have to set this one on the ground. We'll lock our chain brake. We'll pull off our cover, toss him back there. This is the first time I've started this saw. We're gonna pump our bubble till we see fuel. And then we're gonna give it one, two, three pumps right there. Turn it on, we'll on switch. We'll give her a little tug. There we go. Oh. First time. Aha, yeah. Put that choke back down to half choke. Try again. Okay. All the way down, no choke. I can already tell that my bar is a little bit too tight. My chain's a little too tight. We'll loosen that up, we'll lubricate everything, and we'll head over in the woods. Awesome. We're gonna switch hats for old safety Sam here and we're gonna put on our chainsaw, what I've heard them called chaps, but I think they're pronounced shaps. Guys, let me know. Chainsaw experts or horse experts, cowboys. Are they shaps or are they chaps? I'll put links to all the safety equipment and the fuel can 
in the video description for you guys in case you want to pick up some safety gear for yourself and this thing is super awesome i just can't say how good it is i need to pay attention it does have a sight eye that tells you how much is in there and you can see we've got plenty of bar oil we're dead out of fuel second time we've started this we shouldn't have to choke it at all it should just pull and run so let's see <laughs> First impression, very sharp, very responsive. We're gonna go down because the reason we want this is so that we can reach those high, high limbs without having to lift a real heavy saw. You really shouldn't be cutting over your head. However, for today's purposes, we're gonna cut over our heads. This is oak right here. Nice. Disengage. Down. extremely impressed let's get you some close-ups cutting here we've got a little bit of oak this is kind of seasoned oak we've got some poplar down here and we've got some gum so the gum's a little bit hard poplar soft as butter and the oak is a little tough to cut this is not a firewood cutting machine this is a machine that you'd strap to your belt get up in the tree limb up little limbs reach out reach way out and use or a trail clearing machine so far, very, very impressed. Let's burn through a big old piece of poplar. This is about a 10 inch poplar log right here. Not usable for a saw log, but definitely usable for testing this chainsaw. Awesome. Let's try it on some seasoned oak. Oop, turn it on. There we go. So here's the size of the oak compared to the saw. I think it did great. Biggest question is, is this a great homeowner grade saw or is this a great professional grade saw? Well, it's called a professional grade saw, a professional arborist saw. So be careful with it. It's a little different than a standard chainsaw, but the whole purpose of this video is to show you that a hundred dollar chainsaw really may be all that you need in your backyard. There'll be links down in the video description to all these goodies and stuff. I'm not getting paid to show you this saw. I'm just showing you something cool, something we're going to use on the farm a whole lot. Now we're going to fire up to Big Daddy and let him eat. Woo! So this is the G660. I told you I'd fire it up. Well, it starts just like a steel saw. We'll fully engage the choke. We got to set this one on the ground and release the compression release to start it. This is a big, heavy, heavy, big saw. All right, we fired. Got our choke back to middle choke. This is a huge saw. <laughs> oh, man. Lock that chain break, we'll head down here and cut a couple trees. Woo!
like that saw. <laughs> this is just not a firewood cutting saw with this 36 inch bar, but daddy like. Guys, I hope you enjoyed this Tool Tuesday here on the Stony Ridge Farm. A nice little field trip out of the shop to show you some pretty cool chainsaws. This thing is a beast. That other little saw is great. For under 120 bucks, you can get into a decent little saw that, you know, the average homeowner could use in their backyard or a guy like me could use as a everyday carry saw or an arborist could use up in a tree. Pretty cool stuff. Guys, I hope you enjoyed this Tool Tuesday. We'll catch you next time on the Stony Ridge Farm. Don't forget to pound that like button on your way out the door. Leave some comments if you have any comments or questions. If you're a pro arborist or a pro chainsaw guy, please leave your comments. Let us know what you think about the saws. We'll check you next time on the Stony Ridge Farm. Pound the like button, subscribe to the channel. All right? Woo! Well, come on down to the Stony Ridge. Bring your wife and bring your kids who live in life. Hey there folks, this is Josh. Stony Ridge, dang it. <laughs> Horse fly, bite me through my shirt. <laughs> it stops once it's full, we pull it out. This is a little bit of a tight fit, works better with a bigger chainsaw. <laughs> we call that a fail. Yeah. Oh, big boy. Oh yeah. That's a soul.